When Lu Tsong was 20 years old, he traveled with his father, Lu Yuan, to the capital of the Western Jin dynasty, Luoyang. He was tall and imposing, with remarkable appearance, attracting countless attention wherever he went and befriending many famous figures of the Western Jin dynasty. After conversing with Lu Yuan and his son, Sima Hun, the prince of Taiyuan, quietly said to Lu Yuan, I see great potential in your son's future. Later, Lu Tsong served in the Western Jin army with his father, charging into battle. After the establishment of the Han dynasty, Lu Tsong became a military commander, leading troops into numerous victorious battles, becoming a legendary warrior. However, after ascending to the throne, Lu Tsong gradually lost his former brilliance. He transformed from a legendary warrior into a capricious and temperamental ruler, almost like two different people. Why did this happen? From the Wei and Jin dynasties, 220 AD, 420 AD, to the Tang dynasty, 618 AD, 907 AD, a large number of social elites indulged in the consumption of Wuxer San, becoming a trend. Wuxer San is composed of a mixture of five types of minerals, originally intended as a tonic for individuals who were sensitive to cold, easily fatigued, and had poor appetite. Yen. February 9, 249 AD, was the adopted son of the prominent warlord Chao Chao during the Three Kingdoms period. He Yen was weak in his childhood and often took Wuxer San to nourish his body. Consequently, he became addicted to Wuxer San and could never quit it for life. Later, He Yen improved the original formula of Wuxer San and promoted it to society. He Yen claimed that consuming Wuxer San not only nourished the body and enhanced vitality, but also beautified the skin, leaving a rosy complexion after consumption. He Yen was originally a famous handsome man during the Chao Wei period, intelligent and talented and was an idol pursued by countless men and women of distinction. The celebrity effect took place. From then on, the trend of consuming Wuxer San became unstoppable. Social elites, court ministers, and military officers all participated, lasting for more than 500 years. Consuming Wuxer San has certain benefits for individuals with weak constitutions, but its side effects have never been taken seriously by people. Wuxer San contains arsenic, a poisonous mineral called orpiment, which, when taken over a long period, even in trace amounts, causes immense harm to the body of the consumer after a brief period of increased nervous excitement. The individual's personality becomes extremely irritable, unpredictable, and loses self-control. Clearly, Lu Tsong was such a person. It is possible that Lu Tsong developed the habit of consuming Wuxer San during his early travels to the capital of the Western Jin dynasty, Luoyang, and interactions with local literati. Lu Tsong's actions of charging into battle on brutal battlefields masked the side effects of Wuxer San on his body. These effects became apparent during times of calm in his life. After becoming emperor, Lu Tsong lost patience and lacked the interest to sit in court every day leaving the affairs of state to be handled by his concubines. He became irritable, cruel, and inclined to violence. Generals who lost battles were executed, artisans who failed to complete palace projects on time were executed, palace attendants who failed to prepare what the palace needed were executed, and even court ministers who dared to remonstrate, if they happened to catch the emperor in a bad mood, were either killed or punished. This made everyone fear for their lives. However, Lu Tsong was not always irrational. Once, his son Lu can besieged Chang'an and massacred all the Western Jin prisoners who surrendered to the Han dynasty. When Lu Tsong found out, he was furious and said to Lu Kan, I fear that your indiscriminate killing of prisoners will bring about calamity. Such wanton slaughter will surely incur divine punishment. This shows that sometimes Lu Tsong's cognitive abilities were still quite normal. However, his moments of clarity were few and his periods of confusion were many. Initially, Lu Yuan established the Han dynasty based on Confucian moral principles of loyalty, filial piety, benevolence, and righteousness. He gained the recognition and support of many ethnic groups such as the Xiongnu and Han, continuously strengthening his rule. Three months after Lu Tsong ascended the throne, he sent troops to attack Luoyang, capturing the Western Jin Emperor, Sima Qi the Western Jin dynasty effectively collapsed. 
At this point, the power of Lu Tsung's Han dynasty had already extended over most of the Central Plains region although Lu Tsung was a highly cynicized Xiongnu, under the influence of authoritarianism and Wuxia San, the buried savagery and unrestrained Xiongnu cultural genes deep within his body were activated. Lu Tsung abandoned Lu Yuan's governing philosophy based on Confucian moral principles of loyalty, filial piety, benevolence, and righteousness and instead allowed his soldiers to plunder, kill, and loot. He favored sycophants and flatterers while alienating upright and advisory loyal ministers. He indulged in pleasure every day, neglecting state affairs. Regional armies broke away from central government control, and power struggles within the court over the throne became overt and covert plunging the Han dynasty into a crisis of collapse unfortunately, the crisis arrived swiftly. The individual who ultimately destroyed the Han dynasty turned out to be Lu Tsung's father-in-law, a deranged Xiongnu schemer named Jin Zhuan. Jin Zhuan, hailing from a prominent military family in the court, became a powerful figure within the Han dynasty after both of his beautiful daughters were taken as empresses by Emperor Lu Kong leveraging his status as the father of the empresses. Jin Zhuan became a formidable power broker in the Han dynasty, enabling him to become embroiled in the struggle for central government authority. Jin Zhuan assisted Lu Tsung's eldest son, Lu Kan, in using deceit to depose and kill Lu Yi, the heir to the imperial throne. As Lu Yi held the title of Supreme Officer of Minority Affairs, many other nobles from minority ethnic groups residing in the capital city of Pingyang were suspected and arrested, with most of them subjected to various tortures resulting in death. This led to the rebellion of over 100,000 people from minority ethnic groups. Jin Zhuan took the opportunity to eliminate all the officials he disliked. By this point, all the meritorious figures who had followed Lu Yuan, the founding emperor of the Han and Zhao dynasties, had disappeared. Those officials who survived the purge, such as Jin Yuan Da, also became disappointed with the court and chose to commit suicide. Da. On August 31, 318 AD, Lu Tsung passed away, and Lu Kan formally ascended to the throne. Lucan honored Lu Tsung's empress, Jin Yuehua, as the empress dowager and appointed Jin Jun's other daughter as empress and Jin Jun's niece as a noble concubine. From then on, Lu Kan and the three beauties of the Jin family were inseparable day and night, with Jin Jun handling the court's military and political affairs. Using Lu Kan's name, Jin Jun appointed his cousins and nephews as senior generals, thus gaining control over the military power in the capital. To eliminate the last barrier protecting Lu Kan, Jin Zhuan incited the three beauties of the Jin family to provoke discord between Lu Kan and his brothers. Through the tears and pleas of the three beauties of the Jin family, Lu Kan, already intoxicated by beauty and alcohol, astonishingly ordered eunuchs to lead troops and exterminate all of his brothers, the princes, within a single day, in September of 318 AD. When all the aforementioned plans had been executed, Jin Zhuan initiated a coup, leading his elite guards to storm the palace and assassinate Lu Kan. They then rounded up all members of the Lu imperial family in the capital and marched them to the eastern square of the city, where they were executed by decapitation as a public spectacle. Jin Zhuan's forces also set fire to the ancestral temple of the Lu family. With this, in the year 304, the Han dynasty founded by the Xiongnu Lu Yuan became the first minority-led monarchy established in the Central Plains region, effectively perishing after a mere 14 years in history. Point two, 670 years ago, during the ancient Chinese spring and autumn period, a renowned philosopher stated that ritual, righteousness, integrity, and shame are the four moral principles that uphold a nation. If these principles cannot be upheld, the nation is prone to destruction. In simple terms, ritual refers to acts of kindness and goodness, where thoughts and behaviors must not deviate from moral norms, righteousness entails being upright and selfless, unyielding against coercion, and adhering to what is right, integrity involves refraining from greed and corruption, maintaining purity and nobility, shame involves feeling ashamed for improper words and actions, I in ancient China's autocratic society, any short-lived dynasty fell not due to popular uprisings, but rather, due to internal corruption within the ruling elite. This was true for both minority ethnic dynasties and Han Chinese dynasties.